I wanted to welcome all of you to this year's convocation for the Department of History at the University of Arizona. It's kind of a different thing for us, but we're living in kind of different times. Uh, so this is obviously the, the first time we've actually attempted to do this virtually, uh, being hosted by Zoom in their webinar mode. We've never done this before, so I ask all of you to be patient and to relax, you know? We're, we're here to, to do something really important and to celebrate the accomplishments of our students, undergraduates and graduate students, and to celebrate also history and higher education, things that we all feel very passionately about. So we'll all just, you know, take some breaths and things will work out, okay? But be patient. And here's how things will work out. Um, as you know from your programs, we've got kind of a, a plan for uh, how we're moving through the, the ceremonial process. It is basically parallel to how we usually do it in a live setting. Um, what we've been known for uh, in our convocations, which we've been doing since the 1990s, uh, is our habit of allowing our graduates at the undergraduate and graduate level uh, the mic uh, to, to take the opportunity to say a few words if they like, to uh, express themselves or to say thank you or to give us their insights about history and truth in the universe and so forth uh, as part of the ceremony. Uh, and we're gonna try and do that today too. I don't know how to do it, but I have people who are helping with this. We have Dakota Hodgeboom and Katrina Cookshausen, uh, who are our co-hosts and the ones who actually know how to deal with the webinar thing. Uh, so they have their magic ways of being able to, to transfer the microphone uh, to people, to unmute and to uh, capture your, your faces so that all may behold your glorious visages and, and so forth. And we're trusting them to do that. Um, so. Let's get started. Um, I usually have some words to say about history at this point. And sometimes they're kind of defensive words too, uh, about how history is an important thing to study and people tend to sort of look aside and, and focus on things that are leading, leading directly to jobs or uh, STEM fields and, and that kind of thing. And I'm not gonna be quite as defensive at this time because we're in extraordinary circumstances. And over the last few months, as I sit in my rooms alone, uh, I've had the opportunity to ponder what it is that, that I do uh, as a person that I do as a, a scholar and why I find history so valuable. And part of the reason, and this has been true for years, is that history offers us some perspective. Um, we have been here before. Other humans have been here before. Uh, humans around the globe have been faced with extraordinary and troubling and painful circumstances over and over again. That's part of being mortal. That's part of uh, being human. And the writings of those who came before us and the imagery and the, the creativity of those who came before us offer us ways in which we can muddle through the, the human existence, uh, deal with these kinds of painful, crisis situations, um, meet death and also meet life with some wisdom that we've gained from the experiences of those who've gone before us. So what I'm saying is history tells us about how bad things were and how change is going to happen, how humans get through these circumstances. Uh, and learn things from them. Uh, sometimes the things may not be that positive, but other times they, they are, and they can give us strength, and they can give us hope. Uh, we who study history know that change is going to happen, that we cannot go backward. We must only go forward. But hopefully we do so with some strength that we've gained from the experience, and not just our own experience, but our fellow humans' experience. So reading those words, considering those monuments, considering the meaning and the narratives that they bring to us and help bolster us at the best of times and the worst of times is part of what we draw from history. Strength, hope, and compassion for others, the more we learn about our fellow human beings. 
So uh, this is what our students do. Uh, they study this very thing. They hone their analytical skills. They learn to read in multiple languages, multiple kinds of media, and to delve deep uh, into these remains of the, the human past in thoughtful, argumentative, and far-seeking ways. So this is what we do. And this is what we believe in. Uh, we know our students grow. Uh, we've seen them grow in, in wisdom and humanity uh, as they share their lives with us for these few short years. Uh, we're glad of that experience. Thank you for lending them to us for uh, this brief while. And you can have them back. <laughs> they were never ours to begin with. They're all of us. They're individuals. They're humans. And uh, we're very, very proud of their accomplishments. They mean something. Uh, so, uh, with that said, let's get right to this. All right, um, first on our agenda, let me just check the agenda. <laughs> yes, uh, are the awards. Heck, I've disappeared. Oh no. Um, all right. So we offer a number of award, awards on an annual basis in the history department. Uh, I'll just go through them one by one. Uh, the first award I'd like to talk to you about today is the Catherine and Governor Perseverance Award. Uh, every year, this particular award recognizes students who overcome adversity in pursuit of their education. Uh, students whose grace, uh, focus, and determination not only demonstrates the strength of their commitment, uh, but honors us, their mentors, colleagues, and members of the community. Uh, so this year we offer our congratulations to Ricky Riojas, uh, our recipient for this year. Uh, her name will join honorees of previous years on a plaque in the history department office. Uh, she'll be receiving a certificate and an honorarium as well from the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences. Uh, so congratulations to you, Ricky. Uh, did you want to say something? Is it, oh, can I talk now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, it kicked me off for a second, sorry. <laughs> Let me get, get my video on. Okay, hi. <laughs> so I just wanted to say thank you um, to all of the professors who supported me, especially Dr. Crane. Um, for, I don't know, like, I always run to your office <laughs> all the time. And also Dr. Galleon, um, who's been really supportive over the last four years as well. And of course, uh, my family and my friends and everyone else, because I really wouldn't have been able to do it without them. And I don't know, it's kind of surreal to be able to, <laughs> to actually graduate. Um, but I'm glad that I did it. And I'm, I'm really honored to receive this award. Okay, thank you very much, Ricky. Um, just hold your horses because there's drilling going on here and I'm just stepping aside to close my door for a minute, just a sec. We're live. <laughs> the next annual prize from the history department is the Ursula Lamb Prize, named in honor of Ursula Lamb, who for decades was the only woman on faculty in the history department. Uh, Ursula Lamb was a Berkeley PhD and shared her wisdom with generations of history majors. Uh, this award is designated for the outstanding um, capstone project uh, written by a major in the history department each year. Uh, and every year it's a really, really tough choice. We have some excellent uh, nominees with really intriguing uh, and thoroughly researched uh, projects that they, that they offer up for, for judging. Uh, but this year our award winner is Ben Ankarski. Uh, with a research project on revolution and reaction, sites of memory, and the 1811 German coast uprising in the 21st century. Uh, his project assessed the ways in which this early revolt of enslaved people in Louisiana has been re-remembered, uh, how monuments and historical memory increasingly are acknowledging the violent legacy of slavery. Uh, so congratulations, Ben Ankarski. Would you like to say something?
Hello? Yes. Um, I'm very honored to have been nominated for this award. And um, it was, I'm very proud that I could research something that I found interesting and historically important. So thank you to Dr. Crane and uh, thank you to all my other capstone, fellow capstone students. Great. Well, thank you, Ben. Um, your name is also going to go up on a plaque in the, the history departmental office and you will likewise be receiving a certificate and an honorarium in honor of your achievement. We did want to note a couple of awards that have been uh, conferred on history majors uh, by the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences. Uh, both of these are also being honored on the, the college website and I think on the University of Arizona website for their achievement and are getting certificates and, and so forth to, to recognize this. Uh, we did want to mention uh, that the Student Success Award this year uh, went to Monique Davila, uh, from the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences. Uh, I don't know if you wanted to say anything, Monique, but feel free. Um, hi. <laughs> I just thank you. Uh, I want to really thank um, my mentors. I know um, I I had. I have the strength to do a lot of this, but I know without my mentors, I wouldn't have pushed myself as hard. So I'd like to take Dr. Crane, um, Dr. Johnstone, Dr. McWhorter, even you, Dakota, <laughs> for always being there for me, and um, Dr. Morrissey. And I also want to thank graduate students Ruth and James Barefoot. They actually really helped me push um, for my education and continue my education in grad school. So thank you. Thank you, Monique. Uh, we also wanted to, to recognize the Excellence in Leadership and Community Engagement Award went out from the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences uh, to Nitsa Cabral. Nitsa, did you want to say something? Can you guys hear me? <laughs> um, I, yes, I'm so grateful um, to have had this honor. Oh, I'm going to talk that way. Okay, good. Um, I, like everyone, um, have so many mentors that I think um, that I would not have been able to do this without, especially Dr. Green, who I've worked with. Um, I was a first year student my freshman year um, with the Honors First Year Project, me under her wing, not knowing what I had. Um, to offer, and now she, um, she was my advisor for my senior honors thesis, and I'm just so grateful for everything, Dr. Crane. Um, also, Dr. Gallion, um, going into her office every semester and checking all my classes. Um, I'm so, so grateful for um, Catherine and everything she's done. Um, also, Dr. Gibbs and Dr. Hemphill, um, their classes have shaped the way that I perceive and study history, and for that, I will be forever grateful. Um, and this department as a whole, I tell everybody I'm so in love with the history departments. Everybody is so obviously passionate about um, what they study and the students. And I really do feel that. And I'm so grateful to have been a student here um, for the last four years. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you, Nitsa, and congratulations again to all our award winners. And it doesn't stop there. Uh, we did want to, to note as well, the recipients of uh, history scholarships that were awarded earlier this semester. Uh, the Grace B. and Robert A. Cosgrove Scholarship uh, and the award from the Robido Foundation went to Nitsa Cabral, whom you've just heard from. Uh, Monique Dafila was the awardee of the William H. Hesketh and the William J. DeLong Scholarship and Ricky Riojas, that you've also heard from as well, uh, was a recipient of the award from the Robido Foundation and from Colonial Dome, Dames of America. Uh, so congratulations to our History Scholarship awardees too. 
Now we get to the undergraduate degrees. Um, we're kind of going in chronological order, sort of. Uh, we are very pleased that we have with us today uh, someone who earned their degree in the fall semester. Uh, we do one annual convocation every year, so there wasn't a celebration to, to honor it in a timely fashion. Um, but we're very pleased that Michael Schilling is here today to, to share the moment with us. Um, as I noted, he officially graduated last year uh, from Arizona Online. We do have our online de degree program in history. Uh, but it had been a few years since he took uh, history classes. Uh, he had some other things, life intervened and, and so forth, um, but he was able to, to finish up with all the degree requirements uh, last fall. Uh, we are so excited uh, that he's been able to join us for the celebration at last and, and thrilled to have him here today. Uh, Michael, did you want to say something? Can you hear me? Yes. Hey, hey. Uh, let me start the video here. I was not expecting that. <laughs> uh, just thank you so much. Uh, um, it was a long journey. It was always something in the back of my head that I know I needed to get done, but just never kind of got the time to do it and started and then didn't finish. And anyways, uh, 15 years later, finally got it done. And uh, very happy that it's over. <laughs> but thank you for the recognition. I appreciate it. <laughs> Onward to the spring semester. Um, you've already heard of Nitsa Cabral. Uh, her honors thesis title was Dehumanization in the Holocaust, the Experiences of French Female Victims. Uh, she graduates magna cum laude with her degree in history. And as you know, she's an SBS Community Engagement Award winner too. Uh, Catherine Gallian notes that she will never forget Nietzsche. And I think that's true for many of us. Uh, from the time she first joined us, uh, her professionalism, her focus, her commitment to the degree was so incredibly impressive. So we're very pleased uh, that you finished. We congratulate you, Nietzsche, uh, on your accomplishment. You said something, but maybe you have something more to add? Um, I just feel so incredibly honored. Um, I'm so grateful, like I said, um, for all of the faculty and the staff here. Um, you all have helped to drive my love and passion for history that I know is going to um, carry out through the rest of my life. Um, history that I love the most. It's involved in everything that I do and that I love and I can't ever stop talking about it. Um, and I'm so grateful to have had you all as models for that. Um, and I just can't say thank you enough. I'm so grateful. Thank you all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My parents are very excited. <laughs> Now you may think that we're getting repetitive here, but I, I assure you it's just a factor of the, the alphabet. Uh, Monique Davila, as you know, also finished her degree with us. Uh, as you remember, she's a, a summa, she's a SBS success winner, scholarship from the history department and so forth. Uh, I did want to mention too, that she's a Magellan Circle scholarship winner and the winner of the Lauper scholarship, which are not housed specifically in history. Uh, she was also awarded the Catherine B. Willick Library Research Award uh, from the University of Arizona Libraries. Uh, she published a peer review article in Footnotes, a journal of history, and she's been working here uh, as an intern in the Public History Collaborative. Um, she transferred uh, a couple of years ago to history from Pima Community College. Uh, so she's been with us a relatively brief period of time, uh, but has really impressed everyone with her capacity to tackle every challenge uh, to succeed in coursework, research, and her capstone project. Uh, the title of her capstone paper was Captured Innocence, Photos and Memories of Interned Japanese American Children During World War II. She is a summa cum laude uh, graduate at the University of Arizona. Congratulations to Monique. 
you've already said something, but perhaps you have a, a couple more words to add. Um, I just want to say thank you again. I know I mentioned um, how much my mentors meant to me, and I guess I want to repeat that. Um, but I'm very happy that I joined um, the history department, and thank you. <laughs> Our next graduate is Riley Graham, who minored in German studies. Uh, he completed his capstone with Dick Eaton, who tells us how much fun it was having Riley in his class, uh, which focused kind of on travel literature. Uh, for his capstone project, Riley decided to work on Alexander the Great, an excellent choice, I say, as someone who studies the ancient Mediterranean. It is an excellent choice. Uh, everybody's familiar with Alexander the Great because of his spectacular conquests, but Alexander did not leave much in the way of travel memoirs, war memoirs, diaries, uh, or anything like that behind him. Uh, so Riley decided to take a kind of different tack in his project. Uh, entitled Alexander the Great and Persian Culture, uh, he pushed the question of the memory of Alexander's famous sacking of Persepolis, uh, the capital of the ancient Persian Empire in 330 BCE, and asked why and how did the Persians come to see this event, this great destructive event, as something to celebrate and to embrace as part of their heritage. Uh, Alexander became Persianized in the course of his conquests toward the east, um, and is absorbed and, and renamed and so forth as part of the uh, national mythology of Persia and Iran as a legitimate ruler of the empire. Uh, Dick Eaton emphasizes that he told this story, Riley did, uh, with flair, with meticulous research. And Dick Eaton is hoping that your travels, Riley, uh, might take you as far as Alexander's. So congratulations, Riley. Perhaps you'd like to say something. Well, it turns out that Riley is not an attendee today, uh, did not make it to the celebration. We honor him anyway. Congratulations, wherever you may be, Riley. Uh, next on our list is Hunter Hogue, uh, who is finishing with a summa cum laude uh, GPA uh, at his degree in history. Um, Susan Crane notes how much of a pleasure it was having Hunter in class, uh, his passion for studying history, uh, particularly the philosophy of history uh, that made their conversations about Nietzsche and Foucault really fun, really fun. Uh, Catherine Gallian uh, notes how much fun it has been to work with Hunter as part of the team. And I wanted to say how much fun it's been having Hunter as part of the team too. Uh, Hunter was one of our student workers this year in the department. We knew from the get-go that he was smart. We knew he was a dedicated student. We knew he was alert and attentive and a scholar of the ancient Mediterranean. And as you know, I like that. <laughs> Thrills me to no end. Uh, but we're also really pleased to learn how kind and thoughtful he was as well. And this is something that really uh, shown through in the last couple of months uh, in the time of the COVID-19 separation. I've heard from so many members of the history community specifically how much they appreciated and were even touched by Hunter uh, reaching out to make sure that all the members of the community were actually okay uh, on a bi-weekly basis. Um, so I just wanted to say, Hunter, we're so glad to have gotten to know you. We really congratulate you uh, on your achievement here at the University of Arizona and we're, we'll miss you. Hunter, did you want to say something? Okay, can you hear me now? Great, okay, so my camera is actually broken, so I'm sorry, I won't be able to like, show you what I look like, but I promise you I'm beaming. Um, thank you all so much for all of your comments, and it's been 
just an absolute pleasure to like work for this department, which I like, I love endlessly. And I'm so pleased that I could be like a part of the team and a part of like the, the history community in general. And I especially owe thanks to um, Dr. Crane and to Dr. Johnstone with whom I've taken many classes and learned so much. And um, I really have valued my time like these past four years so greatly. And I've been benefited as a person and a scholar so much by the study of history. So um, yeah, just thank you all so much. And I look forward to the future. Congratulations again. Our next prize winner, the prize of history, uh, our next graduate is Cassandra Kyle. Uh, who graduates with the magna cum laude GPA uh, in this history major in in her undergraduate degree. Uh, she finished her capstone with Paul Milliman uh, this semester uh, and has also worked with Michelle Berry in 2019 and 2018. Uh, she is known for her brilliance and for her thoughtful consideration in class and her important role that she's been playing in discussion as well. Um, she previously was known as, as Cassie London, so maybe some of you may have uh, remember her from, from that period in her life. Uh, we want to congratulate you, Cassie, on your achievement uh, as a history major. Perhaps you'd like to say something. Turns out that Cassandra is not with us, but we honor her achievement anyway. Yay, Cassandra. Our next graduate is Alex Lapierre, who is finishing summa cum laude. Uh, he's an Arizona online student, like others that we know and treasure. Uh, Paul Milliman nominated him for the Outstanding Senior Award. Uh, and recognized him as one of the most talented students that he's been able to, to work with in the past few years. He's always happy to see students who are passionate about their research projects and committed to helping their classmates succeed in their research, uh, helping them with a planning the, the capstone project, uh, working with time management and so forth. And he really appreciated those skills and that kind of generosity uh, with Alex. He then took on an independent sort of mentorship uh, with Alex, who was working on a research project on medieval Morisco culture and how it influenced uh, some of the cultural habits of modern Mexico, and specifically focusing on what kind of influence the medieval food of Iberia and North Africa might have had on the food of Tucson and Sonora, Mexico. Uh, at the end of that semester, after doing all this work with Paul Milliman, Alex applied for the Culinary Historians of New York Scholars Grant uh, in order to pursue the project a bit further. Uh, details about this project were published this year, actually, uh, this season, this spring, in the El Palacio magazine in New Mexico. Since 2017, Alex has also been the program director for the Border Community Alliance and his work with this nonprofit organization was featured in the New York Times, as well as PRI's The World. Uh, so uh, congratulations, Alex, in your achievement. Perhaps you'd like to say a few words. I see he's not a current attendee. Well, we honor his success anyway, and we look forward to learning more about Morisco food.
Todd Lewis uh, is graduating this semester with summa cum laude. Uh, Todd actually finished a double degree with a BS in chemistry and a BA in history. Uh, his capstone project was done with David Gibbs, and the title of his project was Expectation and Reality, uh, U.S. Support and Abandonment of Chiang Kai-shek. Uh, David Gibbs noticed uh, that he showed great intellectual breadth in his undergraduate studies uh, with that double major in chemistry and history, which are not really closely related fields, most people think, uh, but did terrific work uh, in David Gibbs' classroom. Uh, Catherine Morrissey noticed how hardworking and precise he was in his schoolwork, uh, engaged and inquisitive. Uh, he's been a wonderful history student. Um, we hope he continues his engagement with the past even as he goes off to graduate school in history, in chemistry, sorry, not history, that other field. His excellence in the classroom is also demonstrated by his membership in Phi Beta Kappa. Uh, congratulations to you, Todd. Perhaps you'd like to say something. Can you hear me? Well, I just wanted to say that it has been an absolute pleasure. Oops. An absolute pleasure being a part of this department. While chemistry and history are certainly um, not the most related degrees, I knew that I would regret not getting a history degree here at the University of Arizona. So it has been an absolute pleasure and I must thank all of the wonderful professors in this department, um, Professor Morrissey, Professor Hemphill, um, Dr. Gibbs, um, <clears throat> Professor Onyate, um, Professor Donaldson. It has been an absolute pleasure overall and it's been a great experience to be involved in this department as well as the chemistry department. And although I will not be continuing with history, um, it'll certainly always be a part of my life. And perhaps um, when I retire, I'll go and have fun and teach high school history. <laughs> but anyway, thank you again for the wonderful um, experience. Thank you again for all. Thank you. Thank you. Audrey Lopez uh, finishes her degree with us this semester as well. Uh, Susan Crane notes that it's really been her pleasure to get to know Audrey in class. Audrey asks the best questions uh, and inspires Susan to think a little bit harder about some crucial issues. Uh, she's pleased that she's going to go on studying with us because she is actually joining us uh, for the master's program in the fall. Uh, Catherine Morrissey notes how pleasant it was what a joy it was to, to meet her in her History of Arizona, uh, History of Arizona course last year, uh, where Audrey demonstrated her passion for Southwestern and Mexican American history uh, very clearly in evidence. Uh, Catherine Morrissey was not surprised to learn that she was a double major in history and Mexican American studies. She's also a museum volunteer at Tucson's Jewish History Museum and Holocaust History Center. She is likewise thrilled, as am I. Uh, Audrey was in my Cleopatra history class this semester, uh, where she was an excellent conversant, uh, a valuable resource to her fellow students, uh, and a, a much treasured um, participant in the wisdom of Cleopatra. Uh, so congratulations, Audrey. Perhaps you'd like to say something. And you're muted. Okay, can you hear me now? <laughs> yes, I want to say thank you to all my history professors, um, Dr. Crane, um, Dr. Hemp Hill, Dr. Morrissey, and Dr. Weiner. And I'm looking forward to learning more. This is just the beginning for me. And um, thank you everybody for everything and congrats and cheers and that's all <laughs> thank you a refreshing and wholesome beverage is always a good means of celebration our next graduate is louis lopez who is a double major with law 
He took History 498 with David Gibbs and transferred from Pima in 2017 to join us. He has always impressed his professors with his persistence and determination. Uh, Susan Crane notes what a pleasure it was to get to know him a little bit in the history of memories and how his family photos and stories really resonated with the entire class. Uh, we all joined together in congratulating Louis on his achievement. Perhaps you'd like to say something, Louis. Sadly, Louis could not join us today but we celebrate his achievement anyway, and we're glad that he was with us. Nathan McWhorter is our next graduate. Uh, he graduates cum laude with a German studies minor. Uh, Susan Crane notes how Nathan approached the history of memories through family connections, reaching back into the 19th century, which really did enliven class discussion um, and brighten it up with his historical collections as well. Uh, he did his capstone course with Richard Eaton this semester, who says that what he admired most about Nathan's work in the, the capstone course was his courage. Nathan picked not one, but two world famous travelers to focus on. Ibn Battuta, the famous globe trotter, who clocked an amazing 70,000 miles across Afro-Eurasia in the 14th century, and the 7th century Buddhist pilgrim, Xuanzang, who famously walked from China to India in search of Buddhist texts. Both travelers spend a lot of time in India, and that's kind of where they, they overlap there. India was completely foreign to both of them. Uh, one came from modern Morocco, and the other one came from the other side of the Himalayas. But Richard Eaton was really impressed how Nathan managed an exercise that gulped down world history, comparative history, completely disparate contexts, and did it all with style and aplomb. He wants to encourage Nathan to keep tackling such ambitious projects. Uh, Nathan was also in my Cleopatra course, uh, where we valued his constant presence back in the before time when we were all in the same room together. Uh, and in the last few weeks when we've been able to come together and have more discussions as a group too. Uh, I know that his fellow uh, group members for the, the final project really valued his assistance and support in pulling everything together uh, for a really amazing um, completed project at the end. So congratulations to you, Nathan. Uh, perhaps you'd like to say something. Okay, can you guys hear me? Cool. Uh, hi guys. Um, I just wanted to thank uh, my family and my um, I mean my teachers. I had an amazing four years. I learned so many things. Um, I just really wanted to thank everybody who has pushed me and supported me this far. Um, I loved it, and it was an amazing, amazing career. So, I uh, thank you guys. <laughs> Congratulations, Nathan. Alexandra Martinez is our next graduate. Uh, she's graduating cum laude and is a double major in anthropology. Uh, she finished her capstone course with Erica Perez in fall of 29, and her professors remember her as a dedicated and devoted student uh, during the years that she was with us in history. Her achievement in this double major and fairly challenging uh, courses of study is likewise much appreciated and respected by all of us. Uh, Alexandra, perhaps you'd like to say something? Perhaps you'd like to say something somewhere else. Unfortunately, Alexandra Martinez is not attending today, but we honor her achievement nevertheless. Yay, Alexandra. Rachel Nach is our next graduate. Uh, she is a magna cum laude uh, graduate in the history degree, but she double majors with philosophy, politics, economics, and law. 
Uh, her capstone project was with David Gibbs this semester, where she was working on post-Cold War shifts in strategy, the disaster of US foreign policy toward the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Uh, Professor Gibbs was most impressed with her thorough research and her outstanding dedication and insights uh, that she brought to this particular project. Congratulations, Rachel. Perhaps you'd like to say something. Hi, I just wanted to say thank you so much um, to all my professors and thank you so much to the history department. You guys are amazing and I have learned so much and I will take all this invaluable information into the future. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rachel. Our next graduate is Sarah Pfeiffer, uh, whose topic for her capstone project was the power of music and the people, how music was influential in a divided Germany and the fall of the German Democratic Republic. Um, she's minoring in government and public policy. Uh, most recent rumor has it uh, that she was going to apply to speech pathology for graduate work. Uh, we honor her achievement uh, and we thank her for her dedication in pursuing the history degree. Would you like to say something, Sarah? Alas, Sarah is not with us today, but we do honor her achievement nevertheless. Our next graduate is Ricky Riojas. You will perhaps remember the name. Um, her capstone project was titled Teatro Carmen in Memory and Monument, a History from 1915 to 2020. Uh, she finishes her degree magna cum laude. She is, of course, as you'll remember, the recipient of the Governal Award and of scholarships. And she has also been an intern this semester in the Public History Collaborative. Uh, Susan Crane notes that she's had the pleasure of getting to know her in three classes and has greatly enjoyed her lively mind and energetic participation in discussion. Um, her project, in fact, produced results that will directly benefit restoration of the historic site of Teatro Carmen. Uh, so the gift of history keeps on giving in a larger sense uh, with ripples spreading out into the community. Uh, Catherine Gallian notes that she will miss Ricky. Uh, she first met her when she was a freshman, uh, not long after Catherine Gallian actually started advising, advising history majors. Uh, so congratulations very much. Uh, Ricky to all your for all your achievements and maybe you have something else to say Hello, I think, oh, there's my webcam. Okay, yeah, so I just wanna add on to my thank yous um, and also thank, in addition to, <laughs> to Dr. Gallian and Dr. Crane again, um, also Dr. McWhorter for being really supportive and uh, just helping with just the whole internship and the PhD and making it a really good experience and encouraging me to continue my outreach efforts um, with the Mexican American Museum. And also thank you to everybody at the Mexican American Museum who just this whole semester has been so kind and so supportive and um, especially since October when I started there. And the Galpin family and the Hislop family and all of the Rio Haases and everybody that's on the Buwan side as well. Um, just because really all of them have just been so great and I really wouldn't have been able to get here without all those people. Congratulations. Megan Salinas is our next recipient of a degree in history. Her capstone paper was on the systemic erasure of the murdered homeless from the collective memory of society. 
Susan Crane notes that she has been a quiet presence in three classes with her. Uh, but if she tends to listen more than speak in class, when she writes, she has a lot to say. Megan's capstone paper drew attention to some of the most vulnerable members of society and how failure to remember their deaths amounts to a double dying. Congratulations, Megan, and keep up your passion for advocacy. Perhaps you'd like to say something, Megan. Sadly, Megan is not a current attendee, off no doubt doing her advocacy. Yay, Megan. Erin Spitzer is our next honoree for her graduation in history. She completed her senior capstone course with Tawana Steptoe in fall of 2019, uh, writing on queer music in America, the concept of queer artists, ideas, and dreams as seen through decades of performances and song. She has a minor in film and television and at one time was a manager at a Disney store where maybe she still is. Yay, I love Disney, interesting. Um, Professor Steptoe notes that she really enjoyed learning more about her interests in music and also enjoyed discovering their shared love for Diana Ross. Uh, so congratulations very much, Erin uh, Spitzer. Perhaps you'd like to say something? We congratulate her even though she is not sadly present with us today. I'd now like to turn Turn the microphone over to my colleague, Susan Crane, who has something to say about our honors graduates. All right, am I on mute? Hi, everybody. I am very honored to be here. Um, on behalf of the honors students, um, one of the caps, the multi hats that I wore in the department over the past 15 years has been uh, the honor of being the honors advisor and this is the first year that I handed over that honor to Dr. Gosner. Um, but in that capacity as honors advisor, I was also really fortunate uh, to meet Nitsa Cabral, who came and uh, introduced herself to me as a very precocious freshman. So in my last capacity as honors advisor, um, let me also just comment on the nature of the major and its requirements and what that means for undergrads and then what History majors are required to write the senior capstone research paper that we've all been hearing so much about this afternoon. It's an intensive research project for many students. It's the biggest research project they have ever undertaken. It's huge and we congratulate all of the capstone uh, veterans that you now are because you have become historians. You have spent a semester devoted to research and the production of a 20, or 15 to 25 page research paper. For the honors history majors though, in addition to undertaking the capstone and completing it, usually in their junior year, uh, they are then prepared to undertake a year long independent research project that culminates in their senior honors thesis, a, tip, a paper which is typically 40 to 60 pages long. And while the capstone topics are typically determined within a framework provided by the instructor for their course, honors thesis students select their own topic and conduct research under the supervision of an instructor who has expertise in a relevant field. Nitsa Cabral chose to explore the painful history of dehumanization experienced by Holocaust victims using French women's testimonies as her primary sources. Nitsa had taken a course with me on the Holocaust. She's also spent the past two years as an intern at, Holocaust, at the Tucson Holocaust History Center. She is absolutely passionately committed to this history and to sharing her knowledge with our community. And she has done this very successfully. I'm so pleased that Nitsa has earned an additional extraordinary honor and that she has been selected for Teach for America. She will begin teaching social studies to some really lucky middle school students in Indianapolis this fall. I'm very proud to congratulate Nitsa on her achievements at the University of Arizona and to wish her all the best as she embarks on her new adventure. Well done, Nitsa.
thank you so much, Dr. Crane. Um, I feel really honored to have gotten to um, study under you and um, have you as my advisor for all these years. Um, like Dr. Crane said, I, I do feel very committed to um, being an educator and teaching this, of course, all the value that we all know it holds. Um, and I feel so honored and honored. Thank you. We had two other students who completed their honors. Uh, we had two students this year who completed the honors thesis. Nietzsche is the only one attending graduation. Thanks, everybody. So is that me now, I guess? That's my cue? <laughs> OK. All right. Um, so again, if, if, um, if Professor Futrell did this at the outset, I'd like to do it again. I'd like to welcome and thank all the graduates, first of all, uh, but also their parents, uh, relatives, friends, uh, continuing graduate students at the University of Arizona that I know are, are attending, and my colleagues for being here and for joining us in this extraordinary 2020 commencement celebration. Um, we're here to confer advanced degrees in history on six individuals, Kristen Cohn Howard, Laura Key, Max Mangraviti, Hannah McLean, Claire Perot, and Sophia Zepeda. This follows a tradition that goes back to the University of Paris in 1231, when Gregory IX authorized the first non-ecclesiastical conferring of the universal license to teach. That license eventually evolved into our masters and our doctorate. The skills that our six new historians have perfected uh, have been compiled and handed down over time from a large array of historians, starting with Thucydides and Tacitus, Ibn Khaldun, Jules Michelet, and Leopold Ranca, as well as hundreds of others. Later, when the profession opened itself to women, thankfully, Joan Scott, Barbara Fields, uh, and Natalie Davis lent their collective brilliance to our timeline of historical acumen. It's my great pleasure to welcome these six young historians uh, into an exclusive club, and I, I mean exclusive. Only about 2% of the people in the US have a doctorate. Only about 8% hold a master's. So you can imagine that that's in all disciplines. So in history, it's even a smaller club than that. Um, I want to just say one other thing before I get to the graduates, and that's May the historical acumen they have worked hard to acquire be the wind in their sails, ever pushing them toward the future, but with an eye on the past. May it also be their rudder, helping them steer through the troubled waters of the present. Without further ado, I present the history graduate student class of 2020. I'm going to start with um, the masters, the lone master's students, um, and that would be. Hannah McLean. Of Hannah, Hannah's mass MA thesis was Within and Without His Religion, the Formation of the Colonial Mexican Jesuits, 1600 to 1650. Of Hannah, uh, her advisor, Utolo Toyman, says, Hannah, congratulations on the successful completion of your MA. I'm very impressed and proud of how you took the question we shared because of our overlapping research interests. Where, where, were there any Irishmen in the early modern Spanish colonies and crafted an exciting MA thesis. It was a great pleasure to read the fruits of your research. I wish you all the very best for your future endeavors. Added to this, uh, Douglas Weiner says, congratulations to Hannah McLean upon the receipt of your degree. I remember with appreciation your help as a graduate teaching assistant for world history. Uh, add to this, uh, Professor Paul Milliman, Hannah is an excellent researcher, an elegant writer, and a wonderful person. While I'm happy that Hannah has completed her degree, I am sorry that I will no longer be able to work with her. Congratulations, Hannah. Hannah, if you are in attendance, 
you'd like to say a few words? Hello, can you hear me? We can. Great. Well, thank you so much for those kind comments. Um, I want to say thank you to the professors I've worked with here over the years, uh, especially my committee members, Professor Gosner, Professor Plummer, and Professor Latoyman, as well as Professor Brescia over at the ASM, who went out of his way to help me uh, with my thesis research, and also the division affiliated faculty, uh, Professor Milliman and Professor Graysford. So thank you all. I've had a really wonderful experience both in the department and the division. And I feel very lucky that I had the opportunity to uh, do so much more with my uh, experience here than I expected, including uh, research abroad, uh, public lectures, some experience with teaching, uh, and even publishing. So I really learned a lot here, even beyond my coursework. Um, so thank you again uh, for all the input that I've benefited from. Uh, and I wish you all the best moving forward. Thank you so much, Hannah. On behalf of the History Department, I congratulate you on your Master's of Arts in History. Congratulations. Okay, um, moving right along, turning to the PhD students um, in alphabetical order. I start with Kristen Cohn Howard. Uh, her PhD thesis was entitled, A House Dedicated to God, Social Welfare and the General Hospital in Reformation Geneva, 1535 to 1564. Of Kirsten, her advisor says, Professor Lotzoyman, Kirsten, I'm very proud of you. It was so great to watch you grow as a historian during your time at the University of Arizona. I'm grateful for being a, a part of your journey, and I wish you great success in your chosen field of archive and library studies. You will always remain my shining example, often used to motivate other graduate students of a person who developed two PhD topics while taking my courses. I'm sure that'll remain a record for a very long time. Congratulations. To this, Professor Douglas Weiner added, in eons past, when dinosaurs roamed the earth, Kristen Cohn Howard took historiography with me. I am pleased to see that she has attained her goal. Add to that, Professor Jeremy Vetter, it was always a great pleasure to have Kristen as one of my TAs for my large gen ed classes. She was a well-organized, dedicated, and highly talented teacher who instills a passion for learning and a high level of engagement with her students. And lastly, Professor Paul Milliman adds, Kristen is one of the very best graduate students I've had the pleasure of working with. Her teaching was absolutely amazing, as was the dissertation she just defended, which was truly a pleasure to read. Congratulations, Kristen. Kristen, if you'd like to add any words. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm um, honestly feeling a little emotional. <laughs> um, thank you to everyone. I've been reflecting on my journey in the department from Doug's historiography class, where I felt like I was in over my head. Um, and I honestly can't believe that I was able to write a dissertation. And I'm just so grateful to Uta and Paul and also to uh, Jeremy and everyone else I work with in the department, as well as to my family, um, both my parents um, and my uh, maternal grandmother who uh, helped sponsor my first trip to Geneva because it was so important to her to make sure that I was able to start the journey, as well as to my parents-in-law and to my husband who is just off camera um, because I really honestly don't think that I would have finished without his support or without the support of my family um, or my professors. So just thank you so much, everyone. And congratulations to all of the undergraduates. It was really inspiring to hear all of you talk. Congratulations. Well, okay. Uh, Kristen, on behalf of the history department, I, should, I would be the first to say to you, congratulations, Dr. Cohn Howard, on your doctorate of philosophy in history. Congratulations. Okay, our second PhD is Laura Key. Her dissertation was entitled, We're All Americans Now, How Mexican-American Identity, 
culture and gender, forge civil rights in World War II and beyond. Of Laura, uh, her advisor, one of her co-advisors, Professor Morrissey writes, a remarkable scholar, teacher, and public intellectual, Laura combines powerful disciplinary approaches to the study of US Latinx populations in the 20th century American West with her commitments to social justice, public history, and community. Her research has been supported by a series of grants and fellowships, most notably the Catherine Prelinger Award from the Coordinating Council for Women in History. A non-traditional Hispanic student and Air Force veteran, Laura Key manages to balance her many responsibilities to academic life, to her AHS position, as well as to family with grace, intelligence, and determination. She has been a leader in her graduate student cohort, selected twice to be president of the History Graduate Association. She's a terrific teacher. Laura has taught a number of courses for the department, including Latin image in American film, Mexican American history, and the history of crime. A former intern with the Office of the Historian at Davis Monthan Air Force Base, Laura has already moved into her new job as Arizona Historical Society Museum Creator, Curator and the Associate Editor of the Journal of Arizona History. Congratulations. Uh, her co-advisor, Professor Steptoe, writes, working as your co-advisor has been the most rewarding experience. I look forward to assigning your book to future UA students. Um, to add to this, Professor Wiener, Laura Key has made the department proud with her accomplishments, and I was fortunate to work with her early in her training here in a colloquium in 2015 where she shone. I join Laura, whose generosity of spirit matches her professionalism in celebrating this wonderful moment. And finally, uh, from I believe he sat on her committee, Professor Vetter. I've been fortunate to know Laura ever since her first semester of graduate school here when she took my US history graduate colloquium and excelled as a genuinely collegial and hardworking student with high character and deep engagement with historical scholarship. It has been a great pleasure to watch her development as a scholar ever since then. Laura, I turn the mic over to you for a few words. Hello, thank you, Dr. Ortiz. I just wanna say thank you to every, uh, the, the staff and the, the professors at U of A. I definitely uh, wanted to prove that they made the right decision in uh, offering me a position here. And uh, thank you to Catherine and to Juana who've been the best advisors ever. And Dr. Ortiz who dragged me across my Spanish language uh, test and uh, without his help this uh, I, I couldn't have done it so I want to thank everybody and I want to as I do with all of my presentations I want to thank my uncles Manuel, Louie and Joe who uh, who inspired me to write about Mexican Americans in World War II and uh, that they are my heroes and I'm thinking of them a lot right now and uh, thanks to my abuelo and abuela uh, for coming across the border and so that we could have a better life and I know that they are very proud up there so Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Laura. And on behalf of the history department, congratulations, Dr. Key, uh, on your doctorate of philosophy and history. Congratulations. Okay, we're getting, getting moving right along here. Uh, next, PhD is Max Mangraviti, whose dissertation was entitled Light Beyond Modernity's Long Shadow, Myths and Medicine in the Making of the Guatemalan State, 1871 to 1900. Uh, of Max, uh, his advisor, one of his co-advisor, I believe, Kevin, Dr. Gosner, said this spring, Max finished up a wildly original dissertation. His study of the history of medicine Guatemalan national identity and the bitter cultural politics of race and ethnicity represents years of ambitious research, thoughtful probing scholarship, and deep contemplation of the moral responsibilities of an academic historian writing about peoples and a nation who have shared a history of genocide and violence. 
thank you, Max, for the opportunity to work together. Uh, and it's a thrill to congratulate you and your family. Uh, of Max, Martha, Professor Few at Penn State University adds, a hearty and well-deserved congratulations to Max. It's been great working with you and to see the fruits of all your hard work emerge in your innovative, thought-provoking dissertation on medical science and racial politics in Guatemala. We'll look forward to celebrating all together sometime soon. So I think I second that. We all wish that. Uh, also adding to the comments, Professor Pieper Mooney, Max, you made it through the finish line and have every reason to be proud and happy about a terrific dissertation. You write poetic prose that carries a passion for the subject matter side by side with evidence and arguments. A tremendous accomplishment, heartfelt congratulations. And finally, Professor Wiener adds, it seems like a million years ago when Max studied history, historiography with me. After all that reading that semester, it's a miracle that he didn't give up on the profession. Sincere congratulations, Max. And with that, Max, if you'd like to add a few words. I'm going to be I'm going to try to be as brief as possible, but there are there are some people who really deserve my thanks. Um, you know, when my journey began uh, in graduate school many, many moons ago, I never could have anticipated just how transformative the experience would be. And this is on both an intellectual and personal level. I mean, for these gifts, I really have accumulated a weighty cosmic debt um, to those people who provided sage advice, good directions, sustenance and support along the way. You know, Kevin Gosner was the first one to welcome me to the history department at the University of Arizona. He walked alongside me as an academic advisor, an intellectual counselor, and a friend. Uh, and that's true even, it wasn't, even when it wasn't exactly clear where I was headed. Uh, at every turn, he forced me to dig deeper for answers in historical sources, to always theorize the role of power in the construction of reality, historical or otherwise, and to continuously question the meanings I attached to history during the investigative process. Um, I could not have asked for a better guide into the historical bist during my first true foray into the history of science and medicine than Martha Few. Professor Few's genuine love for the subject, her dogged determination to leave no stern untold, unturned, revealed a largely unspoken world of uncast, uncontested ideas that forever uprooted any notion I had previously about the nature of knowledge itself. Uh, together, Dr. Few and Dr. Gosner's passion for history shows in their enthusiasm for teaching and their command of the subject inspires those around them to never settle for half-truths and always seek out the full story. Uh, together, they also mentored me as a novice educator. They animated my desire to think beyond the halls of the academy to explore new horizons, not solely as a professional researcher, but alongside the students whose presence graces the sacred space of the classroom. And as a team, they held fast in their support and encouragement for my investigation as I struggled at times to put one foot in front of the other. They believed in me when I did not believe in myself, the greatest gift any educator can bestow upon a student. I also want to thank Linda Green, um, whose passion for social justice, her personal strength and unique ability to see the hidden unspoken processes that operate behind the scenes of history inspire these qualities in all of those who have the privilege of participating in her classes. Um, she forced me to con constantly question the role of power in the construction of knowledge, to connect what I've learned to real-world applications that were relevant to the lives of those who were the subject of my academic investigations. I want to thank Yadviga Pieper Mooney, who unselfishly shares her sharp intellect, wit, and ability to articulate the meaning behind a complex and multidimensional world on the move in remarkably clear terminology with all of her students. Um, and it was, it was sort of as a result of working with her that she also helped me to translate my own theories into a workable model for investigating history that was attentive to how ideas and knowledge relate to power, how power relates to institutions and legislation, and how once combined they structure the social and cultural world in which we all operate. And a special thank you to Professors Burt Berkman, Douglas Weiner, David Ortiz, and Catherine Morrissey, who also assisted in my intellectual and professional development.
And I can say that having attended Dr. Weiner's historiography class, there is not a subject or topic that I was not exposed to in that class um, that I discovered on my own in the future. Um, so that's a testament to, to him. That's a testament to the work that he put into it. Um, and and I, I, I really couldn't have asked for a better guide. But I also want to thank very quickly my parents, uh, Claire and Joseph Mandraviti. Uh, they spent a lifetime instilling in me the tools to survive along with the strength to persevere no matter what the challenge. They never and they never doubted I would do just that. I couldn't have chosen better guides nor asked for better company. Um, to my son, um, who waited for daddy to finish working in order to play, who slipped artwork and toys under the door of my office to brighten my day, who greeted me every office break with a smile and a hug. You've taught me about a love that I otherwise would not have, even, would not have known even existed and made me the proudest father of the world over. I only hope the future provides me with the opportunity to teach you half of what you've already taught me. To my wife and best friend, Ladisi, who's my personal hero, she expanded my horizons during many intellectual discussions at all hours and listened to me pontificate within reason after having exhausted the breadth of my capacity for intelligent conversation on any one subject. To say that I married my better is an understatement. Ladisi shared my dream, and not because she lacked her own or not because she ceased pursuing it, but because that's what you do for those you love. You're selfless. I'm in awe of her presence and forever indebted to the love and support she has shown me. We did it. I hope to one day follow in the footsteps of the professors I have mentioned, who each have that special gift as educators that forces students to strive for greater understanding without making them feel less than. That is to encourage each and every one of us to continue to fill up our cups with new ideas, yet without asking that we first completely empty its contents. With that said, venceremos. We will overcome in the present and future just as we have done in the past. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Max. And on behalf of the history department, congratulations, Dr. Mangraviti, on your, on your doctorate of philosophy and history. Congratulations. OK, uh, next we have uh, Claire Perot. Uh, her dissertation is entitled A Cultural and Environmental History of Paracutin, Volcano in a Cornfield. Of Claire. Professor Gosner writes, Claire has written a deeply engaging, multifaceted study of the cultural politics that unfolded after the extraordinary birth in 1943 of the volcano Paracutin in the cornfield of Dioniso Pulido in Michoacan, Mexico. Her work showcases the breadth of her ex expertise and the depth of her intellectual curiosity, moving from a history of science and public policy making to an art history of painting and photography, and finally to a study of domestic and international tourism. Of Claire, Professor Vetter adds, it was wonderful to become acquainted with Claire's extraordinary capabilities, not just as a collegial and engaging teacher, but also as a highly skilled historical researcher and as a longtime co-organizer of the History Department hiking group. Uh, I second that, Jeremy. Uh, and finally, uh, Professor Beasley adds, Claire will begin her academic career as Dr. Perot at Auburn University this fall. She doesn't know yet if it will be in person or online, but she will be bringing broad experience to the classroom. She took advantage of the opportunities provided by the UA for seminars and courses in Latin American history, Latin American studies, history of science, workshops in geology, anthropology, and science. She also had internships in the Rainbow Bridge program in Utah, the Center for Creative Photography on campus, and as an editorial and production intern for the PBS program In the Americas with David Yetman. Her graduation today celebrates her imaginative selection of courses to provide the education she needed and celebrates the willingness of the UA, U of Ar University of Arizona, to provide these unique opportunities so she could write about the cultural significance of a Mexican volcano. With that, I turn it over to you, Claire, for a few words. And I miss you as our hiking buddy. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks 
to the U of A for this awesome hat that they sent me. <laughs> uh, I just <laughs> quickly want to say uh, thank you to everybody. It takes a village, most of whom could not be here. Thanks to my friends and family without their support. I wouldn't be here sitting here instead of up on a stage, but I wouldn't be here um, without them. A special thanks to my colleagues, my fellow graduate students. Um, it, that really um, helps get through the program, uh, having um, friendly graduate students, especially my fellow Beasley advisees. Um, they know who they are. And also thank you to all the professors um, that I've had the privilege of taking classes with or working with throughout my six years here. Also, of course, special thanks to my committee members, Dr. Gosner, Dr. Vetter, and Dr. Jenkins um, for putting up with my endless questions and requests. Um, <laughs> I think I'm kind of a needy advisee, but finally you're, you're almost free of me. Um, thank you also for the hikes. That has been such an inspiring um, part of the graduate program. <laughs> And a special thank you, of course, to my advisor, who's been the most supportive advisor that I could imagine, Dr. Beasley. Thank you so much. Um, I'm not sure if he's on here, but I really owe a lot to him. He's been encouraging and has provided me with truly exceptional opportunities throughout my six years here at U of A. He's listed a couple in his description, and um, those opportunities that I've always uh, said yes to have, I think, helped me in getting to me to where I am today, um, starting a career at Auburn next year. So I'm very excited about that. So I look forward to future collaborations and engaging conversations with all these people that I named. I hope it doesn't end here. And I just want to say thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Claire. And on behalf of the History Department, congratulations, Dr. Perot, on your Doctorate of Philosophy and History. Congratulations. Okay, finally, um, last but certainly not least, um, Sofia Zapeta, a person that attended a 695K with me way, way back, probably almost as ancient as, as dogs. Um, her dissertation is entitled Fighting Men, Enduring Women, Sailors and Their Families in the United Kingdom, 1770 to 1820. Of Sophia, her advisor, Professor Tabili writes, Sophia produced a pathbreaking dissertation on the social and cultural role of sailors, wives, and families in British empire building in the age of revolution. Sophia produced the first ever price series for bread showing the allotments men sent home did not even cover the cost of this basic commodity. The work is comparative, examining port, examining port communities in England, Wales, Scotland, and Ireland reflecting the diversity of British cultures. Sophia enhanced her analysis with non-textual sources such as cartoons, drawings, and even nautically themed crockery to reconstruct the culture of 18th century maritime gender relations. Of Sophia, oh, sorry, and at the end of summer, Sophia will be starting a faculty position at the Mystic Seaport Museum in my home state of Connecticut. Bon, bon voyage and congratulations, Sophia. We will miss you. Uh, of Sophia, Professor Wiener writes, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, Sophia, took, Sophia Zapata took historiography with me. Ah, I just beat that. And, and I saw her promise as a scholar. Congratulations for attaining your goal. Um, of Sophia, Professor Lotz Hoyman writes, Sophia, it's been a great pleasure to serve on your committee and to read your fascinating dissertation. I wish you all the very best for your future, which I know will be bright and exciting. Congratulations. And with that, I hand the mic over to you, Sophia. Hello. Um, Hopefully everybody can hear me. Um, so thank you. Uh, so I want to say it's been a long road. Um, I didn't just earn a silly hat, um, but also a new set of perspectives and questions, um, bigger questions that will always be with me. Um, as I thought about preparing my remarks for today, 
Uh, I thought a lot about what this time here at the University of Arizona has meant to me and how it's changed my life. Um, I thought about the friends I've made here. Uh, let's face it, Ruth, you're pretty much stuck with me for life. Um, and I thought about the immense support I've received from family friends, whether a willing ear, a ready meal, or a welcome distraction. Mom, Dad, Rita, Paloma, Adam, Jamie, Ruth, you all helped enormously. But I also thought back to my very first year in this program, taking historiography with Professor Crane. I remember sitting in her office, feeling like I could be in over my head with words like Hegelian being bandied about. I felt lost. She reassured me that I wasn't alone in that feeling and that I wasn't lost. She told me to just look up those words, write them down, keep working. So I did. The professors I've had the, pr the pleasure of working with here, uh, not just my committee members, Laura, Uta, and Susan, but especially them, have given me an irreplaceable gift. They've taken my questions, ideas, and research seriously, challenging it and making it better, and making me a better scholar for it. I don't think it would have occurred to me uh, to spend several months digging through uh, British newspapers otherwise, looking up the price of bread, for instance. Uh, working full time as a social studies teacher while finishing this program has been challenging, um, but it's also made me appreciate the power of consistency, of showing up for the people who need you. Too many of you did that for me to name, but know that I appreciate it truly. <laughs> now I look forward to my next step as an assistant professor, Williams Mystic, and I hope to do for others what you did for me here. Thank you. Thank you, Sophia. And on behalf of the history department, congratulations, Dr. Cepeda, on your doctorate of philosophy and history. And with that, uh, and with that, that is the completion of the graduate students and the graduate part of the program. So I turn the mic back over to Professor Futrell. I am unmuted. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, congratulations to all our recipients of MA and PhD degrees. We are very proud of you. I did want to, to correct something. Um, David Strickland, uh, for whatever reason, your name, David, did not get onto to my lists. Bear in mind, there are many lists circulating in, in various locations. Uh, but you also have finished your undergraduate degree in history this year. And it's particularly a shame because you are last year's, one of, the, one of last year's honorees of the Ursula Lamb Award, uh, having written your capstone paper on overriding democracy, American intervention in Yeltsin's 1996 re-election campaign. Uh, you worked with David Gibbs on that. Uh, I was one of the people who had the, the joy of reading uh, your capstone project and I have to say it was really interesting and exciting work. Uh, your use in particular of both government documents and uh, various sort of news media outlets representations of the things that were really going on uh, was striking and I honor that uh, as indeed did did David Gibbs and various other uh, faculty who were involved in that at the time. Uh, so Please accept my apology for this inadvertent loss uh, of your name from, from our lists. Of course, we thoroughly congratulate you on your achievement and honor and recognize your devotion to the habits of the historian. Um, would you like to say something? It looks like David is no longer here. Well, this is all being recorded and hopefully uh, David will be able to watch it at some point in time. And congratulations, David. So, time for some concluding remarks here. My usual habit in putting together these remarks is to, to reiterate 
uh, some of the, the vital importance that I see in the historical project. Uh, some of the ways in which uh, history can bring to us different kinds of, of understandings. Um, reiterate that I think history is fascinating. And as you know, I'm a sort of person who studies Cleopatra. So there are lots of fascinating things uh, about history, uh, the way in which one can find all kinds of stories in the past, dramatic, compelling, human, kind of seedy at times, and, and shocking and interesting stories there. Uh, but history is valuable to us as a society. Uh, it is the thoughtful interrogation of who we are, uh, what led to now, where we came from. It offers us perspectives on the, the twists and turns of the human experience. There are leaps of empathy that are required to understand all the complexities and contortions and strange pathways of the past. Uh, but it's also a key to understanding ourselves and each other, uh, to understand a, a human existence that is increasingly complex, increasingly diversified, and increasingly broad as well, as we have more and more contact uh, with our fellow humans around the world. It's incredibly valuable. Uh, we value your efforts, majors, graduate students, uh, to come to these kinds of understandings. And we thank their family and friends who have supported them in this journey as it goes onward into the rest of our lives. So uh, thank you so much for joining us today uh, at the History Convocation. Uh, thank you for all your support uh, for history and for the people who do history in the past. Uh, and we're glad you were here. And thank you for your patience as well uh, as we struggle through this thing. Uh, so. Uh, have a wonderful Friday. Uh, congratulations, graduates, and do stay in touch with us. Uh, we look forward to learning more about your adventures and your insights, and we'll be reading you uh, as things go by, too. So, thank you. Mm -hmm.